We've got Missy here doing a little uh, follow up on a reactivity. Just on the hokey, following someone here with a little dog. Working on Missy's threshold, how close she can she get uh, before reacting. This is not food driven at all when it comes to reactivity, like a lot of dogs. So what I do here, I tell a lot of people, just stalk the dog. And we just work to a threshold we know we're comfortable. About here, it's pretty good. Missy, sit. A little bit stubborn on the seat, but she's distracted. Good girl, Missy. Let's go. It would be nice for you guys to see a little follow up. Doing good, really good. Consider how close she's getting. Let's go. We'll walk around. Hey guys, how you doing? Just doing some training. This dog's working on reactivity. Used to be quite aggressive around dogs, so we're just. She's getting a lot better, especially little dogs. She's doing better. Good girl, Missy. That's good. Leave it. Leave it. Yeah. Good girl. Like a little bit reactive. Yeah. And she displays it with a bit of aggression, so she's getting better. <laughs> yeah, let's go, Missy. Good girl. Good girl. So I just had a little incident before I started the session. The owners, I was standing there, and the person, uh, a lady, it's actually up in front of me now, stood behind the client, behind my back, and gave the signal across the throat, don't train with me. She kept saying my name, don't train me. So I approached her to uh, ask what her issue was. And her issue was that I correct dogs on halties. Yep, I do. With aggressive dogs, reactive dogs, her answer was science supports that there's no need to ever correct a dog. I'd like to see the science. I'd like to see the tests that were done to show me how you train dogs that are extremely reactive, aggressive in public, and how you fix it with food. She is not interested in a biscuit. You might say, work to a threshold. I keep saying this. It's unrealistic to work to a threshold that big in this town. There's too many dogs. I stand by it. I believe dogs sometimes need a consequence for what they do to understand that actions aren't accepted within reason. I'm not going over the top with any dog. Um, so I spoke to this lady, politely asked her not to disparage my name or discredit my name anymore without any proof of what you do. Same science supports. Show me the tests. Show me the study. Show me how many dogs. Show me the before and after footage. Show me how you stop training dogs being reactive without any corrections. I would love to see it. If you can show me it with an aggressive dog. I'm not talking little barking. I'm talking aggressive reactive dogs. Show me how you train these dogs without any corrective methods. Voice anything. It is very challenging. I don't like correcting dogs. And they're trying to tell me it changes the dog's nature. Yeah, it can if you do it wrong. I'll show you Missy now and how she's been with little dogs. You saw that footage there and how she walks with me. This is not a dog that's scared of me. This is a dog that's learning. You can't act like that in public. You can't be that way. If we don't fix this problem, this potentially could be a dog that's declared a dangerous dog, which can lead to dogs being put to sleep, put down, because they can't be in public and they might attack a dog. We need to fix this issue. Is it enjoyable to correct a dog? No, it's not. Sometimes it needs to be done to work through an issue. So, a bit sad, a bit frustrating. Um, and I asked if she trained reactive dogs, says she has. There's levels to reactivity, guys. There's levels. Let's not say a barking dog is reactive. I'm talking aggressive dogs. There's a very different, different uh, level of that. And one other thing on that. Don't comment on me because you watch a 10 second clip of me correcting a dog. Watch it in context. Watch everything I do. Watch from start to finish on working through a dog with extremely reactive to get into the point where I've got a dog like this that can be around dogs in public. Reminding myself to calm down and breathe after someone speaks to me like that because it, it is a sore point because the people are talking about something they don't know about and they haven't done anything themselves when it comes to dealing with these sorts of issues with dogs. But yet they'll throw this thing about science supporting it seems with this power word you put science behind it and it means everything's true but like i said show these studies to me but watch it in context if you're going to comment on anybody not just me any system of any method of anything not just dog training watch everything they do from start to finish before you make judgment and really know why people are doing what they do and understand their methods i'm sure there's levels and i know there's levels of dog training where people are excessive absolutely but i'm not one of them so sometimes you've got to open your mind up a bit, like I say in my other videos, and understand context of why people do what they do, and that some of these dogs, unfortunately, it's not a fortunate thing, we don't want to be doing it, 
unfortunately need some corrective methods. I try food, that is my first step, I try food with dogs. But a dog like this has no interest in food. And then I can't just work to a threshold like I keep repeating. So I have to work through a corrective method that is only equal to what I need. It's enough to just snap the dog out of it, get the dog's attention, and then straight away work to the praise. This is what you open yourself up to when you publicly put your videos out there for anybody to see. Open channel, you don't have to do anything, you can just watch what I do. I'm opening myself up to judgment. Anyone can have that same issue. There's a lot of people in a lot of different fields that don't open themselves up to that because they don't stand behind what they do or they're scared of public ridicule, which I actually understand because sometimes it's just not worth it. But you've got to understand sometimes you're gonna get some of that because not everyone agrees with what you do in life. And again, not just dog training, whatever method you teach, there's gonna be people that are haters that don't like what you do because it's not their way. And I get that, but it's the unfortunate side effect of social media. People can judge you without knowing full context. So. That's the downside, but I still stand behind it and I'll keep posting, I'll keep showing because I believe I'm doing way more good than any harm. Missy, leave it. Good girl. Leave it. Good dog. Leave it. Good dog. Good girl, leave it. I let her look. I'm not trying to teach a dog it can't look. That's good, Missy. Good girl. Has I met these dogs? Again, what do I do? Use them as a training target. I follow them and I'm trying to teach it, it's okay to look. Don't get it twisted, guys. I'm not teaching dogs, you can't look at other dogs. You just can't act on it. So I'll follow them for a little bit. It's pretty close. For a dog that's extremely reactive, I'm within like five, six meters there. Good girl, Missy, and then we come back the other way. Let's go. Come, Missy. Good girl. Better give this girl a drink. It's pretty hot. That was excellent. There was no correcting there. Really good, good girl. A small dog coming up here. Wait till she sees it and I'll give it a preemptive leave it. Let's go, leave it. Good girl. Nice and confident past the dog. Leave it. Let's go. Leave it. Good girl, leave it. Good girl, Missy. Come on, leave it. Yeah, good dog. Good girl. That was pretty close. But you see how I walk past there? Just get through it. Do it with confidence. Keep your dog focused. Continuously talk. Let her know she's doing good. Good girl, Missy. Want a drink? That's how you pass the dog when your dog's reactive. Don't give them time to think about it. Just get them past, keep them focused on you, redirect their focus on something else. She's come so far. Good kill, Missy. See how this pass goes. The dog's walking, Missy's walking. Leave it, come on, quick, leave it. Good girl, leave it, uh -uh. leave it, no, leave it, good girl. That's all right, she can look. Let's go, come Missy. Yeah, good girl, that was close. As in, I don't mean close to her attacking, I mean close distance. Good girl. We want to make it really clear to the dog what you can and can't do. I always say to you guys, make sure you don't have grey areas with the dog. Make it very clear. You can look, you can't look. You can bark, you can't bark. So what I'm teaching Missy is you can look all day. I'm going to let her even stop and look. I want her to explore and see things. But she's not allowed to act on it. That's all I ask. She's not allowed to act on it and be aggressive in any way at all. And that's what we're working towards. She's done really good today, done amazing. I'm very, very proud of her. Good job, Jess. Nice. Good dog, Missy. Good job. So I need to jump in and do a quick voiceover here because the wind picked up really bad in the in the video and you really couldn't hear me speaking because I didn't have my mics on. This is Jess, the owner of Missy now. We plan to walk across the concrete here thinking one dog was coming, but we got surprised by three dogs, and that considering Jess does really well to deal with this. You'll see one coming up on the right here, Missy cuts in front of her. Now, before Missy was put on this uh, head harness, there's no way she could have any control of Missy like this. So that was actually a lot better than what Missy's been before. So much better if you look back at her other videos. Now another, another dog comes up, and again, considering how, dog that, how close that dog was, uh, Jess does a great job in getting Missy under control. And then there's a third dog. So not an ideal situation, but dealt with quite well considering how that surprised her. Now coming back down here, there's another couple of dogs and we just work on a bit of a threshold, just getting Missy around dogs. That's what I tell you guys all the time. If you have your dog that's reactive, the reaction can't be to hide your dog away. You have to choose to confront it in a safe, controlled way, but you have to give yourself the tools 
and the equipment to be able to deal with the situation. There is no way in the past Missy could be this close to a dog without reacting. If you go back, I'll put a link um, above this video. You can see her previous videos and how much she's improved. She's come a long way, but we've got a lot of work to do to work mainly on uh, Jess's handling. Like anyone out there, you have to be a good handler. The dog will take advantage of whoever it can take advantage of. So if your skills aren't very good, it's going to be a slower process than having good skills to better handle the situation. So guys, this is the answer. Exposure, patience, repetition, good equipment, and know what you're doing. You can get a lot better. As usual, I really hope you enjoy my videos and you're getting something from it. Please, you need to do the work to improve your dogs. Don't expect it to happen without putting in the work. Uh, I really appreciate your subscription. If you enjoy, I'll keep bringing the videos, keep teaching you guys and helping you out with your dogs. Thanks again. Nice. I'm back over here.